Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to answer some questions using the ideas that were developed in the last couple of videos. Our objective is to use the postulates of Dalton's atomic theory, law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions, uh, to answer some typical problems that you might see on a homework or an exam or a quiz. The first one of these questions asks, which one of these figures represents an element? Well, according to Dalton's atomic theory, all of the atoms of an element are identical. So we would expect them in this type of representation to have the same size and to have the same color. Um, so the only one of these that has uh, spheres that all have the same size and the same color would be drawing B, but it's showing two of these atoms that are identical stuck to one another. Well, it turns out there are seven elements that occur this way, with two atoms stuck together to make a diatomic molecule. Hydrogen is an example of that. Oxygen is another example. Um, since these are colored green, they're probably color coding for chlorine. So this is probably supposed to be an example of, of uh, Cl2, the element form of uh, chlorine. So since all of the atoms um, in answer B are drawn exactly the same way, this is the best representation of an element out of these choices. So I guess I should circle that. This is answer B. This question is using the same diagrams, but it's now asking which one of these is a compound. According to Dalton's atomic theory, a compound is formed by combining atoms of different elements. So to make that compound, we will be looking for more than one drawing, more than one type of atom in the drawing, and they should be combined together. And based on the law of definite proportions, they should have the same ratio for every example. Well, we know answer B is an element, so answer B isn't going to work. So that's going to be either answer A or answer C. In answer A, we have uh, for each one of these molecules drawn, we have one red atom and two whites. So that's looking like it could be um, a compound. And then if we look at answer C, um, some of the representations have one green and one white. The other representations have just one silver. Um, so that's not going to be a compound. Everything would have to be the same, uh, the same atoms and the same ratios to be a compound. Okay, one last time. Same figures, but different question. This time we're looking for a mixture. Well, this is an idea presented back in chapter one, and a mixture um, is a mixture of two or more substances, and a substance is a pure element or a pure compound. Well, we know that answer B is an element, and we know that answer A is a compound. Answer C is actually a mixture of an element, which are the gray or silver colored spheres, and a compound, which is the one formed by the green and the white spheres. So answer C is going to be a mixture. This question tells us that 85 grams of water are decomposed, and that produces 75.6 grams of oxygen, and it wants to know what mass of hydrogen is also produced. So this is an example of a decomposition reaction. Water is broken down to give us the elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Well, based on the law of conservation of mass, the total mass that we started with has to equal the total mass that we end up with. We are starting with 85, sorry, we are starting with 85 grams of water. So um, I'm going to call those the reactants. The reactants are the things that we start with, and we have 85 grams, and that's all we have. We just have water. There's nothing else initially, but then they're going to be decomposed to give us hydrogen and oxygen. 
Um, so over here on the product side, we're going to have both hydrogen and oxygen. And we know that we have 75.6 grams of oxygen, but we're looking for how much hydrogen was produced. We don't know. However much mass we start with, which is 85 grams in this case, has to be equal to the amount of mass we end up with, which is 75.6 plus this unknown amount. Now, um, this is a great example of one where you should estimate the answer before you run it through the calculator to make sure you're in the right ballpark. Um, just to make the numbers easy, over there on the product side, I'd round that to 75 um, because here's what's going to happen. We're going to, if we're going to solve this algebraically, to get x by itself, we're going to subtract 75.6 from both sides. That'll give me 85.0 minus 75.6 is equal to x. If I round this second number to 75, then I have 85 minus 75, which gives us about 10 grams for x, um, and so it looks like probably answer A will be our correct answer. Let's run it through the calculator just to be sure with the real numbers. So 85 minus 75.6 is equal to 9.4. So yes, answer A, 9.4 grams is the correct answer. As we're working through these, make sure that you understand the process not just that the final answer is 9.4 grams. On a test, you're not going to see this exact same question, but you are very likely to see something where you have to add up the masses of all the reactants, set that equal to the masses of all of the products, and then solve for whatever is missing. So if you understand that process for the test, you'll be in great shape. If you just remember something like take the first number minus the second number, um, you're going to be in a world of hurt on the test. So please, please, please uh, make sure that you're going for the process, that the total sum of the reactants equals the total sum of the products. When you get that down, you're good to go. For wrapping up this section, our objective was to use the ideas of Dalton's atomic theory, conservation of mass, definite proportions, etc., in order to answer these problems.